An atomic clock is like a regular clock, except it's atomic. Aerospace engineer Dr. Danielle Monahan can tell us more. The word atomic means related to an atom or atoms. And the word clock means, well, we all know what a clock is, right? But when we put the two words together, we get the most accurate clock in the world, an atomic clock. Without atomic clocks, we wouldn't have GPS or an accurate time display on our cell phones. Plus, they're absolutely critical for working in space. But who makes these perfectly precise clocks? Scientists like Dr. Danielle Monahan do. I have been interested in physical sciences for a long time. I think my earliest memories are from um, growing up in Minnesota and around a lot of nature. But I think that is kind of the start of, you know, an interest in science. Understanding how the world fit together and the mysteries of being able to go out into the wilderness. And to me, space kind of speaks to that same sense of wilderness. This very second, Danielle's atomic clocks are telling time up in space. And she's down here to explain how they do it. In order to tell the time properly, the clock relies on the oscillator uh, moving back and forth at the same frequency over a long period of time. In this case, the oscillator is the pendulum. So I'm gonna try to get two clocks going to see if they can keep time together or if they're going to have an error. You know, you might see they start off together, but very quickly, we're starting to have some errors build up. A pendulum clock may work for a short time, but it accumulates error very fast. So we need a better oscillator than a pendulum. Enter quartz. In a quartz watch, the oscillator is a tiny tuning fork made of quartz. When jolted by electricity, quartz oscillates or ticks at precisely 32,768 pulses per second. A quartz oscillator is better than a pendulum, but it still accumulates error. That could be due to vibrations and temperature changes. So we're looking for a clock that can stay accurate for a long time under unpredictable conditions and can't be reached by humans to be reset if it goes wrong. And that's what we need for a clock in space. In addition to a quartz oscillator, every atomic clock contains key components that make it work. What we've laid out are the components of what's called the physics package. A broadcaster, like an antenna or a horn, shaped like this. An atomic vapor cell, in this case, cesium. A light source, like this laser diode. And an electronics package. When exposed to microwaves, cesium atoms oscillate at over 9 billion times per second. And since a cesium atom isn't subject to weather or manufacturing deficiencies, it helps the atomic clock keep the perfect time all the time. Here's how. As the quartz oscillates, it sends out an electrical signal that's used to create microwaves at an exact frequency. The microwaves are then broadcast onto the cesium atoms in the cell. The microwaves will have a certain frequency based on the ticking oscillation rate of the quartz. Depending on the frequency of the microwaves, the cesium atoms will absorb more or less of them. The laser then measures the state of the cesium atoms and communicates that info to the electronics. And an electric pulse is then sent to the quartz to get it going at the right pace again. This correction happens once per second, keeping the atomic clock on time for years. This is a replica of the actual atomic clock that is currently on our GPS satellites. Thanks for keeping us all running on time, Dr. Monahan. Now, I wonder if a cesium atom would help me stop hitting snooze every morning. <laughs>